Uh, hello and welcome to another Retro Power Uncut. Uh, and we've got the finishing touch to the mezzanine done now, which uh, Jamie's is going to test his nerve, I think, at some point by walking down it whilst filming. So if, you su if the camera suddenly tumbles into a big heap and there's lots of oohs and ahs, it's gone terribly wrong. Uh, I'm actually doing this one this morning, uh, early in the morning. Normally it's late afternoon when we film these uh, because very shortly we're taking this down to Roger Clark Motorsport to use their rolling road and Alex from DTA is going to hopefully do a successful mapping session on it. So this is always the ner most nerve wracking stage probably of any car build is uh, seeing it flat out on the rolling road for the first time um, and being somewhat nervous about uh, what, what will go wrong and what will go right. Um, so I'm going to get some footage down there and then next time we'll probably see how it went, possibly even uh, later in this episode actually. Uh, right, so we've basically been on the countdown to being able to rolling road it. Last time I think James was doing the Lambda Boss on the exhaust um, and buttoning up I think the throttle cable and a few other bits and bobs. Um, this time we've, we decided we'd better put the windscreen in. That's not gone into this point, not for any reason. We've had the screen, the seal and the chrome for ages. Uh, it just didn't seem like a priority job, but uh, we figured Alex probably won't want the full force of Roger Clark's wind tunnel um, rolling road in his face while he's mapping. So windscreen in, always an awkward job on these because the big chrome inserts a metal piece um, so getting the actual screen and the rubber in is not too bad but getting the chrome in afterwards is, is mildly perilous because you always think you're going to slip and scratch the paintwork um, but that went probably as well as i could hope it to have gone um, then we've been looking at the suspension so if you cast your minds back we actually just had some cut down standard springs on this on the front uh, it had no dampers on the front and on the back it just had some solid metal bars um, because we've been waiting for Bilstein to build us the coilovers we're using on the back which are, they're basically built to our dimensions. Um, we previously machined some billet clevises um, that basically bolt into the original damper mounts uh, which will be reinforced um, and then uh, the coilover then goes into that clevis effectively so it's a bushed coilover top and bottom. So they arrived literally yesterday, uh, with nothing like cutting it fine. Um, so at the moment we've just got some springs that we had in stock on the back which actually seem remarkably close to being the right rate might just go a touch softer um, and then i've got some uh, derek watson uh, uprated lowered springs on the front to try which i'm going to let it settle down it's sitting too high at the minute um, once it's settled we'll see they might be okay but i'm thinking of potentially getting uh, eye back to build us a set that has probably um, resulted maybe an inch lower ride height depending on how it settles down. Uh, so yeah, at that point it's rolling uh, on, on some sensible springs all around. We've got quite a lot of ground clearance. We've wound the back end up as well because that's adjustable so we can get underneath and strap it onto the rollers. Um, I've just been fueling it up this morning uh, and we are pretty much at that point ready to go. I'm um, just trying to think whether there was anything else on this. Um, I feel like there was. I'm actually going to go over here and look at my list, which is unusual. Uh, ah, yes, of course, the speaker grills. So um, one of the remaining pieces in the puzzle for the interior was the rear speaker grills, uh, which we basically CAD designed, James's design. We've kind of got a little bit of an art deco feel going on, which is, is sort of the whole car's got a little bit of that feel about it. Um, and there's like a bit of a reference to the, the sort of grooves, the three offset grooves we did on the steering wheel design. So we've carried that over to the speaker grills, which are uh, essentially four parts, I think it is. So you've got the main part of the grill, and then there's three little bars that inlay into it, um, all machined from aluminium. Now, the, the main section is actually going to be hydro dipped, although it almost seems sacrilege to do it because it's so beautifully machined um, by Andy at Concept 303. Um, we're going to get those hydro dip with the wood grain that we've got elsewhere in the interior and then the three little bars that insert into there they're going to be black anodized uh, and that'll go down onto the onto the leather parcel shelf and that'll probably be one of the last pieces of the interior the center console we've been concentrating on the mechanical uh, ready for the rolling road but the center console build is also ready to go ahead now we had the um, anodized switch panel engraved uh, we've also had the actual switches the the labeling for what the switches do the little chicken head switches as they call them on the dash has actually been engraved into the surface of the switch itself and will be infilled with white paint. Um, Bruce Holder's done all that for us so I can't wait to see all that come together on this. Um, so yeah, nervous times, rolling road probably starting in a couple of hours time and we'll see how that goes.
Chevette is probably the next area um, to mention. So we've got the design, the support structure we made for the Motec keypad in there, which we designed. Uh, George drew that, uh, 3D printed it, we're happy with that. Andy at Concept 303 machined the parts for that. Trial fitted it uh, yesterday or the day before. Um, that fits absolutely perfect. It's really solid with the aluminium as well. Um, so those parts are now going to go away for anodizing. Again, it's almost a shame because <laughs> it looks so beautiful in its raw machine finish, but it doesn't really go with the theme we've gone for of everything murdered out, as they say on that car. So uh, that's going to go for black anodizing. Um, the wiring loom, which I think we mentioned we were waiting for because there's a domino effect of jobs that that holds up. Max finished the main loom. He's almost finished the engine harness as well, which will be coming over. But the main loom arrived a couple of days ago. So I've been fitting that over the last couple of days. Got it all rooted where we wanted it to be. The rear leg runs down the sill and then over the inner, inner arch tub. We'd previously put welded on bosses everywhere for where it's going to be clipped and where the earth points are going, etc. So it's, it's really just a case of laying it all out where it's got to go, rooting it through all its holes and grommets um, and starting to connect everything up. Um, and that's, that's looking really good. So with that kind of run across the front i've also started to get the headlamps together so if you remember we've done a, a sort of custom quad headlamp by xenon hella um, conversion on it so the mounts we made they came back from anodizing a while ago they've been bolted on and i've fitted the xenon units on the ballasts are already on underneath as well scott did that a couple of weeks ago so we made some little aluminium trays that sit underneath and have like a downturned rear edge because they sit just behind the bumper, but they're sort of exposed to the front of the wheel. So we did a splash shield integrated into the mount. Um, they're in, so the wiring's all in for those. And again, we made provision for that while it was all bare metal. So the main power cables up to the Xenon units from the ballasts go up neatly through some holes in the inner wing, which are sort of evenly spaced as the lights of the wires just come perfectly parallel down. Um, John's been working on all the brake plumbing because in order to get the interior complete, there were just a few things that need to go in before the seats for access reasons. One of those is the Motec keypad mount and the other is the rear brake pipe. And it made sense to do all of the brake pipes inside. So uh, we're doing hard line all on the inside. Um, and the, the plan, which is sort of coming to fruition nicely now, is that we've got that billet reservoir on the um, tunnel top. And my vision was always to have three hard lines coming down out of that perfectly parallel down the tunnel under the foot plate which covers the master cylinders it's a floor mount pedal box and then to have one hard line coming up parallel and kicking back towards the rear two coming up and kicking forward towards the front which will be the front circuit which will split left and right in the engine bay um, and the one to the clutch um, and that's that's looking really good so the final piece on the in the puzzle on that is scott's just making the foot plate the, the heel plate that you, the, your heels will actually rest on while you're driving um, and it covers the master cylinders and the plumbing where the pipes come out of the master cylinders <clears throat> so once that's made and painted you'll really see that whole look come together with the hard lines all coming out of the side so really looking forward to seeing that um, and i think the next step on that now is to get those carbon trim panels made we already patterned for those um, and with the motec mount anodized the carbon trims in and the hard lines done seats can go in harnesses can go in we're going to get the dash flocked uh, so yeah, it should really come together over the coming weeks. Um, so yeah, good, excited to see progress on this. Nervously excited to see this on the rollers. Uh, and I'll hand over to Nat now to see what's been going on in the metal workshop um, next door. So yeah, well, welcome to another episode of Retro Power Uncut. And uh, yeah, Carl's handed over to me, Nat. Hello, folks. Um, so I'm going to take you through uh, what's been going on in the metal workshop. I've still been doing the carrying on with all our various building projects that we're doing at the moment. So I've been away from it all a bit, but I've been over this side. So I've been seeing what's going on so I can enlighten to some extent, at least. So walk this way over lots of pipes. <laughs> we'll step over here. We'll pause by the Land Cruiser because that's been the major, uh, major theme. Tom's been busy again, as always, on, on this. Uh, and he's in, the, uh, he's in the latter stages of it now. He's getting well, well through it. Uh, the first sort of major task, uh, you may recall from the previous episode, he'd got the boot floor largely installed, 
but it then needed seam welding into the forward section of the boot floor, uh, which was a very long, uh, continuous weld across. And I think uh, we left it with him sort of just trying to get set up for doing that weld. I think he may have even had it tacked up, actually. But that's going back to my old welding theme again, as the long-term viewers will remember. That was, uh, that was done as, uh, as one long, big, long weld. But I won't elaborate too much further on that. I'll hand over to Tom and let him explain what he was up to on that. So over to Tom. So yeah, end of last week, oh, I trimmed all that in, got it all ready, prepped it all. Um, Friday I tacked, got the floor in, got the back rail in, trimmed it all to that, tacked on the front. Um, so now I'm just going to try and weld across, across this join here, but obviously it's the full length of, the, of that and preferably want to do it in one full weld, but it's such a... a a length that's uh, it's going to be hard to do so I'm going to try and put some stuff in here so I can get comfortable and then just do one full run across that. Right, so yeah, so Tom's done a beautiful job of that, all planished up and looking really, really nice. Uh, got all that finished now, so yep, yeah, all sorted. Uh, he's then moved on to just uh, finishing off this back section. I think that's still to weld in. I'm not actually quite sure where he's at on that, but I think that's still to weld in at the back. Um, but then moving on from that, he's gone on to um, the repairing the windscreen surround. The fault, the, on these, there's a fold down uh, windscreen surround section and as with all the other lift-off panels, which the one area of this vehicle where we did suspect there were bits of crop, we didn't know about all the lower sections, they were quite well hidden, but one area where we did suspect there were various areas of grot was in the lift-off panel sections, and that was, to, to, to no great surprise, yes, they all did have bits of grot, um, but the, uh, and the windscreen surround was no exception again, um, and that needed a repair along the full length of the lower edge. I think it's the lower edge, or is it the upper? No, it's the lower edge of the windscreen surround. The, the full length of that needed replacing. It was pitted in places. It, it could have probably gone again as it had when the vehicle was restored before. Um, but realistically, it needed replacing. So Tom's done all that. And again, I'll hand over to Tom and let him explain all that because he can explain it better than I can. So over to Tom again. Yeah, so once I did the floor, welded that in which went a lot better than i thought it would to be honest um sort of found this in the paint room kind of forgot about this panel but uh yeah that sort of where the water had been collecting in this just sort of rotted all these two edges it's sort of two halves so um started by cutting the this return edge off the front half um 
and just well cut both edges off tapped a new new edge along that welded all across that managed to do it two welds and it's like 1.4 meters so each weld is about 700 mil um, did that managed all that out dissed off the weld and then uh, put this other sort of ratted return edge on um, and then did that in two welds as well cleaned the weld off and now I'm just sort of putting in little bits and bobs where it's sort of pitted and rusted um, weld them up disc off the weld and then uh, it's done onto, onto the build up see how everything fits and then last little stages I think So, yeah, Tom's done a lovely job of all that. That's all now finished. It's all still straight. He's take, taken time, which I'm sure he'll have uh, explained in his little stint, but he's taken the time to make sure it was reinforced at each stage and that no significant distortion occurred and that no curving happened so that you know, the windscreen still fits in the hole and everything still fits and it all drops on the car. And then to that extent, uh, in terms of making sure things still fit the car, obviously, as you'll have noticed here, uh, Tom's now started refitting all the panels, drilling holes for mounts in new, new sections that are welded in, basically getting it back all completely panelled up so that we make sure everything fits before we do before he does the final bits of welding on things that could alter alignments and also making sure that everything still fits the chassis and all the mounts still fit that everything everything goes where everything should be um, which is it's getting very very close now just he's, he's just been in the last hour been putting these panels on he's just nipped off to get a coffee but he's uh, he's literally just panelling this up now so yeah, next week uh, I, there'll be certainly some footage of it with the with the panels on it will probably as usual have been de-panelled again by next week i imagine to do the various final finishing off bits but it's getting extremely close to the far more interesting stages of doing the modifications to the remaining parts of the car to do the changes that we're going to do in, in terms of seating in terms of uh, dash modifications things like that there's a whole variety of things it's quite a long list which if you go back through episodes that, 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 we, that we talked about previously so i won't go over it all again now but uh, there's, there's quite a lot for, uh, more changes to be done to the metalwork on the car in terms of cosmetic changes um, that we've that we've, we're looking forward to getting on to rather than just making it good um, so yeah that's all, all till to come watch this space and you'll see it develop moving on from Land Cruiser we're going to wander over to Morris now 
Stu's done a little bit on the uh, on the Morris. He's actually been away. Uh, Stu's had a, a well-deserved holiday, so he's actually been away for a little bit. Um, so he's only actually come back today. So uh, there's there's not been a huge amount of progress on the uh, on the Morris. He's been working on uh, carrying on with the bonnet. We we left off where he'd um, shaped uh, and beaded a, a reinforcer for the back edge of the bonnet to try and stop the sides of the bonnet flexing and just add some reinforcement to it. He's uh, working on the fitment of that and fitting the latch boxes for the final part for the, the, the lengthy saga that's been the um, bonnet latching mechanisms. He's just uh, working on fitting those latch boxes to the bonnet, fitting them to the reinforcer section, getting that all welded together so that then he can bond the whole lot into the, uh, into the bonnet panel and get all that, get all that finished off. So yeah, he's, he's getting pretty close now to, to having all that complete. Additionally to that, um, you may, I think we introduced George probably a couple of weeks ago. Our, uh, so I'll just pause for a sec. There's a bit of a, a bit of cutting going on on the paint booth installation. Um, yeah, I think we introduced George a couple of weeks ago. He's our uh, our new guy um, straight out of university. Uh, he's he's our uh, our youngest recruit who's now on board. Um, ge ge general general work around the place, but uh, fun, a, a large proportion of his work at the moment is is CAD work uh, and engineering design, which is which is uh, design is his background. Um, and he's been doing some work on the doors, and I've gone and forgotten to bring my prop through, but it's all right. That'll be uh, that'll be shown uh, that'll be shown in a bit of detail in a minute. But we are re-engineering the door handles. The um, customer. Uh, who owns the car wanted a, a different design of door handle to replace the Morris design. The Morris handle mechanism doesn't really lend itself to incorporating central locking for a whole variety of reasons I'm not going to go into because it gets quite complicated. But, but it's very difficult to fit central locking to a standard Morris door release mechanism. Now, eagle-eyed um, viewers will remember that we fitted mini door lock, anti-burst door locks, Mark III mini um, anti-burst door locks to these doors now, and mini window lift mechanisms. Uh, and we're finding that a lot of the mini parts are quite good, quite cross over quite well, unsurprisingly, because it's a very simple door, flat glass, etc. They cross quite well over to using in this um, in this door. We touched on the electric windows before, we're, but what we've got to do is make a way of modifying the handles to a design that the customer likes and also making those so that they are compatible with the mini door latch mechanisms and also with a central locking motor. Um, so there's a little bit of engineering to do there. It's actually reasonably, not super complex, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a mechanism of design, uh, sorry, a design of a mechanism uh, to go on uh, in there, which, which needs to do a variety of things. It needs to move various pull and push rods v v by, by the correct distances to operate the latch mechanism and the lock mechanism. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to George at this point for his first little uh, retro power clip and let him explain that mechanism because he'll be able to explain it a lot better than I can because he designed it. Right, so this week I've been working on primarily the Morris door handles, which if we can look at here, this is the version 1, um, which effectively converts the Morris handles into working with a mini latch. Um, so the door handle works like this, left and right and then we needed to convert it so it does. If we just go here, converts it into an up and down motion to work with a latch. So this is the version one, and then this is the prototype of it, which consequently is broken because it didn't quite work. Um, but we've been working on it and now we are on to version two, which is looking a little bit different, but um, effectively works out all the kinks of the prototype and fingers crossed we will have a working prototype that fully works by the end of this week we, but we shall see all right so thank you george for uh, explaining that that's all all nicely done and uh, yeah we'll there'll be a few iterations along the way as i'm sure he'll have probably explained but the the the, uh, the 3d printed parts that we have now will probably be printed another couple of times yet just to make sure that everything fits and works before they are all machined in billet um, but yeah we're looking forward to uh, to getting to the stage of uh, seeing all that Further following on from the Morris, uh, paint booth construction continues. Um, we really, really, really need that to be finished now because we, we, we need to get the other booth down. We're in a position where I can't do a lot more work now until that, that paint booth is finished. So, uh, so that's, becoming, that's becoming pretty urgent now. That needs to get completed ASAP. 
um, and other, other work going on. Uh, Gaz and Steve are working on quite a backlog of flatting and polishing of panels in the paint booth. Um, the Chevette panels are being uh, flatted and polished uh, and various other panels on, on various cars that had been fitted to the cars to harden off that we've then gone back to to polish. There's, there's, there's one or two others uh, being done as well, plus ones we can't talk about. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're having a bit of a flat and polish marathon, which is set to continue for a little while yet. So uh, that's what's occurring there on the body on the bodywork front. Uh, and that, I think... Um, is about where we're at. I, I've been doing a whole variety of jobs around the place, but none of them particularly photogenic jobs, like putting chimneys through the roof and things. So nothing too, uh, nothing too exciting. Um, so until next time, we uh, like and subscribe. Buy a mug if you want one. We've still got, we've still got a few mugs left. So if you, if you'd like a mug, grab one of those while you can. Uh, and yeah, until next time, we shall see you soon.